Možná ještě mám se druhý mikrofon zapnout. Thank you very much for the invitation. I would like to uh, say thank you very much to be to be here, to be allowed to be in Prague. I was here 25 years ago, and I made a walk today, and it, it, so, so many things has happened, happened within a uh, generation. So it's really nice to be back, and, and I will enjoy it tomorrow. So thank you very much for being here. Uh, I will show you some of my works from um, the office, but first I would like to show you, show you a couple of drawings that are not mine, but uh, I think uh, that they tell a lot about how it is to work with the landscape architecture. The first one here is, is uh, it's actually a print from uh, the Geological uh, Museum in in, uh, in Copenhagen in Denmark, and it's uh, it's a, a small uh, plant that's drawing that's done by um, a, a, by a botanist uh, in 1883, and it, it is actually a drawing of. Um, some stones uh, where you have some plant uh, some plant fragments inside it, but the the plants have turned into stone. And I I really think this transformation process of taking first green leaves it becomes it and goes into being stone, and then from that on it becomes a drawing, and then it goes into becoming a uh, uh, digital drawing. This whole transformation of uh, time and this possession of stone and landscape and uh, botanic and whatever is part of uh, what we work with as landscape architects. And the second one is uh, another one uh, from uh, from a part that I, it's a book I really love. It's from, it's a, actually a portrait of, uh, of Rome, made in 1933, and it's called Format Wobis Woman. And it was uh, the general director of um, Rome at that time, some years after it turned into um, the city of the new Italian state. And he uh, sort of collected all the drawings of the ancient city, the new uh, uh, capital of Rome, and, and the planning. And he made all these transformations. So you see the city development and also the ideas of how the city should be taken uh, for 2,000 years. And I, I think that's part of also working with architecture and, in cityscapes and working with it in landscape architecture. It's about this dynamics of things that actually doesn't look dynamic, but it certainly uh, is a remembrance and, and a total transformation within 2,000 years. And you build and transform and change and override. And, and so it's, it, whatever you do is always part of a process. And I really love these two drawings, and I think they tell a lot. So uh, my uh, uh, my office is uh, this, and we work with landscape planning and city space. My firm is like uh, is from I started it in two thousand and two by winning a competition. I'll tell you a little bit about and. We uh, are 15 in the office today. We've been uh, lucky to win a lot of competitions in Denmark, so I work mainly in, uh, in Denmark and from Denmark, but also in Oslo and in uh, Stockholm. We work with uh, urban planning and master plans, uh, a lot of renovations of dwelling areas, and specifically within the 
last couple of years, we've been able to work with Heritage Sage, uh, which is a, a very thrilling experience, I think. And we also work with cultural institutions, hospital areas and parks and cemeteries, gardens and urban space. I think uh, what collects the whole thing is that in many senses we work with the public site and the functions of the public sites in the dimensions that uh, are the society's needs, both the modern ones and, and uh, the former ones. And I think that's uh, my main focus in architecture, to work with these sites and to work with the public space, with, which means, of course, in this cultural context, the more or less social democratic space of the Scandinavian countries and the needs that we have, uh, both as a modern society and this transformation you have all the time. So I'll show you uh, uh, four or um, different things I have worked with. Uh, the first one will be uh, the Parks Boulevard, uh, which is um, a transformation more or less of a, of a, uh, just a road. And it, it's part of a transformation of the city in Copenhagen, where they've learned so much so, of uh, making it participatory programs when they need to transform city areas, specifically run down uh, areas in Copenhagen. The municipality have learned a lot of uh, big lessons about the failures they did in the 70s, where they more or less just uh, moved populations out and then came in and changed the buildings to whatever standard that was politically uh, correct at that time. Nowadays, and this is um, one of the parts part of what is the history about, is that they uh, start with um, organizing um, people and make them uh, participat participants in this physical change of their area. And it has been done very successful in this area, which has been over a 10 year period. And I won the competition of a transformation because it was a very uh, uh, socially uh, problematic place at that time. But uh, in this organization, the participants of the, of the area wanted a park, and specifically a park that could represent them. And so um, they chose a site and they made a competition, and we won the competition, and I'll show you this piece, because it was uh, uh, done as, as a participatory program, and it was the first job we ever had did in the office, um, and it still have laid so many um, ideas for what we do from that on. Uh, then I'll show you uh, what we're working at right now is, um, is uh, the Yavafed, it's a cemetery in the northern part of Stockholm uh, where they have uh, what they call the Million Program, where they have very huge dwelling, <coughs> dwelling areas and where they uh, um, also work with the, how to uh, have people involved in, in this. And then um, I'll show you a little bit about uh, from the place where I live in Aarhus, where we're working with the transformation area of the, the harbor front. You have this all over in Europe that the old harbors from when we run out of industrial time and send everything to China, we have to transform some of the areas into cultural sites or uh, nice places. And this is part of uh, such a thing, and it's happening in my uh, city. And I was happy to win the com competition in this area, so I'll show you about that. And finally, I'll show you the piece that we finished last year, which is a uh, cultural heritage site, one of the three UNESCO sites in Denmark. So let's get started.
And uh, please feel free if you have any questions, so uh, you can just uh, let me know. So uh, this place in Copenhagen, which is here, is uh, this whole area was transformed from a sort of social rundown area into what they call the lifting of the quarter. And this red piece is the two kilometer site that we uh, uh, was chosen to be transformed into from a road into a park. And it has very interesting context because actually here you have the water and here you have the main route into Copenhagen. And, um, and on, nearby you have some very nice green spots but these are more or less taken by the official football sites, so it's not a really good place to be. So, uh, in, there were a lack of parking spaces, and uh, there was really this high wish from the population in the area that they wanted something for the kids and something for the youngsters to be, um, to instead of uh, just hanging around and doing nothing, they could be organized and do uh, something. And this was part of uh, the, the photos from the competition where we had this vision that it should be transformed into some kind of city landscape uh, that uh, could allow the kids to run free. And uh, also these red crosses more or less uh, um, are invitations for to participate uh, from the people around in uh, who's living around in the, in the Prague area. It's called Prague's Boulevard, uh, so it's uh, it's nice to show it here in Prague. But that's the name of the place, and the vision is more or less what happens here. We suggested that they should plant a um, lot of trees. They should uh, grasp together whatever uh, area they could get uh, and transform it from asphalt areas into grass. And then uh, we should participate on whatever was going to happen on the red crosses. And uh, in a couple of months, uh, maybe half a year, we agreed uh, together with the organization around and the people who were participating uh, in the, these seven programs for the area. And then we also um, figured out that it was better that we did the green area, we took care of the green programs, and they would uh, participate on these seven programs. And these are more or less decided exactly from, from these group hearings we had. And they wanted, uh, like the first one is a small plaza, where, where they sort of wanted a, um, an introduction to the area, a new site or a new interface towards the city, something to be proud of. And the second one was a small garden for the elderly. Three, we have stage, and four and five are sort of hang around sports areas, uh, double programmed areas where the kids can come and and lent some uh, equipment like um, footballs and stuff, and they could, or they could do street baskets, whatever. We definitely made them out of the competition measurements. They were just supposed to be free for everyone. And then at six, there was a kindergarten, and finally seven, there was a streetscape for, at that time, this is done in 2002, uh, an upcoming sport, which was um, roller skates and also skaters. And here are more or less the green programs that we were participating with. Uh, we, instead of benches, we suggested that every individual could uh, have a chair. And so we uh, designed and produced a million chairs, or not a million, 700 chairs, who was put out in this area more or less as a social experiment, but also uh, as, um, uh, as a free gift, one could say, for the municipality to, to interact with the green areas. We planted 120 trees, 
and we uh, did a, uh, also design some lamps because, as you know, it was an insecure place, so lightning was a very big focus in this uh, part. And then the green grass, which was uh, the whole connecting thing. Here are some, uh, we built a very big model, and then we had some digital, uh, digital uh, programs also, so that we can communicate the ideas together with the people. And we're actually sitting in, uh, in the house that was built for the organization of the publics um, getting together. And it's a house done by Dorda Mandel, who's, who I'm um, also heard is going to come here later. But here we are, and these were the meetings. I think we had eight meetings where we specifically programmed the seven place and also did the design together with uh, people. Of course, we did the drawings and the models, and then they uh, uh, criticized it and uh, decided whether we should go forth or not. And it was a very intriguing and very good process. I believe it was one of the first sort of really times where you did participatory designs in Denmark, but we had some very great experience by it. Um, and specifically because we really allowed people to get into the process, but also because uh, they were so well organized that we were able to not sort of play each other out. They were, they were very uh, um, familiar with the part that we were responsible with and what they were responsible with. And this is um, part of, um, of the long stretch with the the newly put in lamps, we need to fill in the grass, you can see up here. These parts are going to be grass, and we were, all the planting were going to be in here. But here you see the chairs, and you see the parts where, where you can walk, and uh, bicycles, and the lamp, lamp posts that are dividing uh, the two areas. This is from um, in November 2006, where uh, all the uh, people who are, were involved with the participatory programs were invited for a special day, uh, special rainy day <laughs> that happens to be. But it, it's all sim very simple materials. We had uh, the, the green areas, and then um, the green areas was also the, the chairs and the lampposts, the trees and the grass. And we had to deal with some kind of polluted areas as well. And we covered them with steel and made them with grass on top so that instead of sort of using our money to put it down into the earth, we were sort of transporting it up into sites. So this is the stage area um, taking a, a, a day or two after. And then it's done in asphalt, and we use the red uh, color for for the seven programming areas. So I'll run further on. This is in, in Sweden, and it has some of the same issues for this public space as was shown in, in, in the Prague area. This is also uh, uh, one of the modern part of a landscape, one could say. It's more or less a piece that's left over from very building, the building site from huge motorways. And it has also some remembrance of uh, archeological site. It is in all sense a modern landscape type where you sort of have bits and pieces of everything um, that is happening around it. Uh, big dwellings uh, like here, here in front, on both sides, you have big um, dwelling areas. And here is uh, a green space that is more or less a leftover space. It's unprogrammed, and it, but it's still filled with different kinds of interests. Planning interest, archeological interest, uh, also non-expert interest like uh, People from the dwelling areas are really having a nice time there, so they want it not to be too designed. 
they just want it to be a free space. You have a lot of um, uh, colony, lot of uh, uh, small um, uh, places where you can do gardening, and there's also a small space for air traffic. So in many senses, this is this is more or less what we call landscape today, leftover spaces that have some nice qualities, but it's also a place where you have a huge area in the middle. This no. Here, you have almost a hill that's built by ground, uh, earth material, a uh, building material from these areas. So it's it's more or less just the wasteland as well. So it, it's it's more or less designed by time, one could say, and designed by. Uh, uh, the context to which it is uh, inside. But it's also a very important sort of free space, both uh, in the orientation of the city of Stockholm, where you need these green, long green areas to be open so that uh, uh, the density doesn't get too high. And. Uh, and there was a competition in 2010 about making a modern cemetery in this area. Uh, it was a public uh, 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 competition and there were 120, 110 suggestions and we were able to win it. And um, one of uh, uh, the ideas for, for the area was a sort of a completely new reading of this area. Instead of sort of taking a ceremonial design and put it on top of this landscape, we said that this landscape is more or less designed, so it's not needed to, to, to do a new design for this. What we will instead is to make sure that it can be used as a public space for the people around it and then we will put uh, the cemeteries in like, um, here you see this meaning of the big area that it's part of a green lung in, in the place. And we sort of read the place in this sense that it had all these interests. And then we would put in the, the cemetery functions as um, we organized it also in its own design, that we had the top where the building um, uh, material had been put. Around that was the lower part, and then it was surrounded by wet fields, and on one of the sides towards the, the motorways, uh, we could have fields because it was sort of um, fragments of former fields there. Uh, so it was all together a mixture of uh, cultural use of, of a landscape. And uh, this was how we organized it, by just reading it as found, one could say, as we found it. And uh, this is how it is in the different uh, sites. Down here below you have the fields, you have the wet fields, and in, in between there were sort of areas where there was uh, mixed uh, woods, both um, uh, oak trees and bjorks and stif different kinds. And then on, uh, you have the top on, on the bigger parts. And then instead we put in the cemetery functions uh, as islands. And in this way, we could uh, work with the different kinds of tradition for cemeteries in uh, various uh, islands. Like for instance, part was going to be Muslim uh, cemeteries, part is going to be Christian, part is going to be even um, uh, some, uh, it's all a multi-ethnic uh, uh, area. So in that sense, we could make uh, some small uh, placements in it. And of course, we let these cemetery areas or these islands uh, take color of this uh, landscape context that they were placed in. So in that sense, 
out here you have the fields. Here you have the fields. So we formed the islands as fields. And here in these edges, we formed them as edges. On top, we made them round and different. And this is how it looks today. Uh, more or less, um, we've gone into the planning period with it. And um, we're able to have um, quite a lot of uh, fields uh, and uh, the cemetery functions together with uh, the recreational functions and also leaving uh, the whole landscape as it is, more or less. And these are how the, uh, the cemeteries will be uh, put in, like uh, fragments within this fragmented area. And so here on top you have these areas of cemeteries. And um, this is an area where we put in um, here you can see the cemetery is as a small island within the, and we planted some trees and you have the functions in here. Here are a rendering of how it could look uh, with the fences surrounding it. And then we have uh, smaller ones uh, formed. Um, these are just drawings from the competitions. Uh, they're actually done on an iPhone. And here, uh, here you see them again with this small tower sort of telling everybody that here's the cemetery, here's an island of uh, a different kind of function and around it you can still have the, the life as it is. So in that sense it's also an idea of making a cemetery a more modern space where you both have death and life between each other. And it's in the winter time where you have the towers here. You can see them here. And you, you can see the cemeteries lying in, around in the fields and the forest. And uh, I hope that we, we now in 2015 and we have uh, more or less finished the planning program. But it takes a long time to plan these uh, areas, specifically when you make new programs. It has, um, a, a lot of people have been very anxious about um, the idea of having this recreational spot mixed between uh, cemetery areas. They want it to be divided. So I'll just pop into another transformation. This is uh, the part, it's much a much harder surface, but it's also a big huge huge big surface of ores. You see this, uh, this, this port that you see, and you see the city behind. It's, uh, it's quite a, a, a normal situation for a European city where you have these ring roads, and in here you have a medieval center, and here you have a big port. This is closing for the city and the the sort of the whole idea that this is a city lying by the water. And ten years ago, the city wanted to transform it because the, the inner parts of of the port was insufficient, and they built new ones further out. And so you could transform these inside in inner circle into something uh, that would uh, rearrange the city's connection towards the water. This is more or less a very infantile drawing of uh, the landscapes of De uh, over Aarhus. To the east you have the sea, and to the west you have the, um, some very beautiful lakes, and north and south you have, um, you have some very nice forests and woods. And the terrain allows you so that the river runs right into the sea, and where you have the red circle, that's the part where it gets really interesting, both uh, city-wise, but also connecting towards your landscape again, towards the sea, towards the river, and towards the forest north and south. And this was more or less how we did it. We sort of made um, a big position where uh, there could be a new library, 
and in this, in this sense we also connected uh, the cathedral of the city lying here, a very beautiful cathedral. So we suggested that they should pop this off and connect it with the water here. And then we took the river and joined this one out into the sea, into the sea. This is the project site, and here's more or less the new geometry opposed on the former geometry. And um, so you have this situation with plus and minus, and I'm only part of this um, organization for the transformation. So somewhere we put more water and some less of water. And uh, they had a very huge, um, here you more or less ha have the program that we wanted to go from the, the city here. You have a, the long stretch of the city. Here you take the river into the sea and you more or less make an axis here where you have two twin sort of places, one with historic programs and one with newer program. And this was sort of the new history of Aarhus that you have uh, this new arrangement so that this all becomes a new attachment to the water and in that sense also a new attachment to the landscape we're living in. And we wanted it to be a story about how you get from solid to liquid. And this is more or less one of the uh, one of the models from the competition. You have the cathedral over there at your right side, and you have one place uh, with the historic programs and the old warehouses, beautiful great warehouses, and you have the new space uh, in front of you, lower and below uh, towards the sea, and finally in the end you have this big media space which is called Dom, and which is used for both public um, municipality areas and uh, libraries. And then, of course, we had to fill in a lot of traffical programs too. You have a purple one, which is very important that you allow all the citizens to be near the water. That's one of the purposes of the whole transformation site, that you're actually, as a citizen, able to reach the water. And then we had a very big new um, bicycle ride, and we had a new uh, lightweight trail that should transform from a lot of um, city, from a lot of cars into people going with a much better uh, tram. And finally, we still have the cars. So a lot of programs. And this is more or less the concept of, of this new city floor that uh, you bind it together, both uh, towards the edge of the water and then from, from the, the city and towards the water. And we wanted, of course, to have this landscape feeling, this uh, reference that you water can also be uh, the solid and we tried to work with a sort of Nordic feeling. And this is from the development of these uh, huge stones. So we try, we made half of it is uh, from concrete uh, on site, and part of it is done with very huge tiles that are the measurement of a, of a person. They are 40, 40 centimeters by two meters long and they're 25 centimeters thick. So you can take all the, all the um, traffic. And it also allows us to, to be sure that uh, the tiles with, will understand the scale of the area. Because it, it's part of the difficult things about these areas is that you inherit so much land and, and yet you want to make them really nice and not so huge and not so industrial. And you have to figure out how to combine these different problems. These are just uh, 
and we did a whole participatory program with the people of Opus where what could happen um, with activities around the year. And then, of course, also here we have uh, a very interesting uh, job of working with the uh, different kinds of trees. We're planting more than 200 trees in the area. And, and we wanted to understand both how they could manage the salt water and how they could manage uh, the difference in root and vegetation. So we made the study of all the botanical requirements for this plant category. And these, we made some very huge areas where the planting could be so that they have sufficient needs. And, um, and here you see the plan as it's going to be. It will be finished in 2016 by next year. We hopefully, uh, the tram is a little bit late, as all public transportation is, I guess. But here you have the new site. You have the access uh, for, uh, for the big story with the city connecting to the water. This is the middle-aged city. And here you have uh, the twin space. Uh, just with the old programs, and you can get down to the water here, both here and here. You can still have boats coming in here, and here's the big program with the river coming out uh, with the library. But uh, also, I'll just take you to a small because part of this uh, central perspective idea with the access, we also wanted to just to make nice places being by the water. So I'll show you this story, how we try to transform this. This is the axis, more or less, and you see the different kinds, the gray areas are with the tiles, the big tiles, and the lighter areas are with the concrete uh, done on site. And here you get uh, further on, and we have these benches that are 35 meters long, and lots of trees coming in here. Um, and these are granite, white granite. So you have a mixture of areas that are uh, defined by the place that is lying just by the water. And we made some, some uh, sketches for how we could mix the, the area. This is the latest plan. And this is how it's going to be. You have the cathedral axis as it looks on top, and this is how the axis should be, uh, hopefully in a couple of years. Uh -huh. And here, this this area has been um, uh, adapted. It, it has been finished. So I should have brought you a better picture than than uh, the one on top, but it looks more or less like like the one down. And this is where you see the library coming out and one of the old warehouses there, out there. And this is from the site, recent pictures. And finally, I'll just give you a little bit about Yelling. Yelling is a small town in the southern part of Denmark, but it's also a UNESCO site for a, a, a Viking plot. And uh, we were commissioned to do this area because they found a very uh, new archaeological site. This uh, orange part you see is new um, archaeology, a very huge palisade. And we were commissioned to do the, uh, to tell the story, one could say, in one-to-one in -one scale. And um, one part of it was to sort of connect uh, this uh, area together with the city. So we suggested that they should move the, the road. Uh, here we, we have moved it. <laughs> I'll just try to show. Here, in the former days, the road was here. And we suggested that they should move it outside. So you could connect the city with the, with the area, which is actually a quite nice place. It's, uh, it's consisting of two modes and some cemeteries and old church. 
uh, UNESCO was one part of the suggestions that the project should make a better buffer zone and also incorporate these new findings that you see in the square or wrong side. And uh, we did it together with a Danish artist, which is called Ingmar Kronhammer. And, uh, and it was such a fantastic task. Also, we, we worked with this fantastic uh, geometry from the Viking Age. You see here the, the, the shape of the palisade, where they've actually found three corners. I'll try to show you. Here, this was the first one. The act, it was an archaeologist who walked this line, and suddenly it wasn't there anymore. And then he found the corner, and he found the second one. And this one is under a house, so you cannot never find this. And then they finally found this one. It took two years, and then they were secure that this was, in any sense, this archaeology of this big um, course that they have been looking for for many years. And then they found this ship shape. And one of the mouths is right in the middle. And here you have the cemetery, and you have the cemeteries around, and you have this uh, church, which is from 1100. But they know that this geometry was done in 982, to be specific. And it's done by hard Bluetooth, and he also did like three or four ring fortresses around in Denmark. And what it's for, or what it's supposed to be used for, nobody knows. But this is uh, part of this um, uh, interesting site, in why it's UNESCO. It's because they have the stone setting, and they have the molds, and also the bigger interiors. And here you have uh, um, these ring fortresses, which is up north in Denmark. There's a huge one, and here's one too. And then you have Yelling in the center. He did a long bridge, which is more than 700 meters lo long. And down here he did some fortresses too. And it's part to do with the constitution of the landscape. It's so that here you have wetlands, but here you have, because due to the ice age, that you have right in the middle of, of Jutland, you have a long and steady road, which has been used since the, uh, the prehistoric times, which is called the, the hairline. This is a sort of palimpsest or the reading of, of the different founds. Up, up in the top, you see what they actually found what the ar archaeologists found. And the second one is more or less what, how they thought it had been looked, how it looked in, in uh, around 900, when it was a uh, heathen monument for um, probably a king buried in the mold, the stone setting, which is part of uh, the ideas from the, the belief of uh, the Vikings, and then surrounded by the palisade. And probably the, the third drawing is how it is transformed or rewritten by Hart Blotten when he made uh, the Danish Christian. And so he put out these two modes, one for his father and one for his mother. And in the middle you have the church, and straight in between this you have the stone where he writes upon it that he Christians Denmark and Norway. And he's the son of uh, Gorm and Tula, his mother and father. And we were supposed to do this new transformation. We had to sort of show this palace and rewrite the landscape with these parts are part of the city, and this is part of the city. And of course, there were no ideas sort of just to tear anything down. We just had to take a part of it together. And this, what you see up here, is a small dike, uh, which is probably connected to the stone setting. And so we suggested that they should 
construct, uh, to show the construction of the Parisat, right between from where they found it. And the houses, they found three houses, very big houses, they should be drawn upon concrete and the ship shape was shown in the same format. And we took all the different measurements and made them into one to two, which is part of the original measurements that we could work with. And here you have the foundings, and of course we couldn't put it upon the foundings, so we just put it a little bit aside, so we had uh, to respect it, of course. And here's how the, the constitution of the palace is shown. And this was um, uh, done last year, and, and here you have the, the mold right in the middle, the northern mold, and you have part of the palisade. And in that sense, we made a, a creation where we had one place, a very huge area, which is inside, and you get one thing which is definitely outside. And that's part of the propose. And this is just the two types of tiles that we drew on and the section towards uh, how we did the, the, these um, posts, which is showing the exact construction of uh, how, um, how the Vikings built this remarkable geometry. And we, we cut it off like this uh, because nobody knew or know how big it actually is. They know that it's between three or four meters. So this is, this is more or less four meters, so we cut it off in that sense. And this, of course, is, uh, is the figure that it gets. This is the corner side where you get the shape of the bigger area. Um, as the cornerstone. And this is how it looks today. And then uh, it's all done in a white concrete. And this is the ship shape where uh, we organize the, um, it so that where they actually found stones, we uh, tip them. So you can see that they actually have some that are found and some are not. This is it's very funny, in the, like 40 years ago, they found stones inside the southern mold. So actually inside this, they're standing stones. They found the stones inside this. So it's, a, it's an amazing piece where history definitely has been transformed from one religion to another and rewritten. And together, together of course, the purpose of this what we've done, this is part of the big houses that they found, is that uh, it's a tourist site and it, it purposes to, to uh, let people know about this. This is more or less drawn upon, upon the concrete, um, just um, with the retardation. And this is how it's, it's done today. And people use it for all different kinds. It has a huge impact on this little city, but it's very popular now. Of course, there were some speculations when we did it. With it. So we had some nice arguments, I would say, with the population there. Uh, this is um, uh, part of uh, the city life where you get a huge big park. park used for everyday life or some of the programs you saw before. And this is how it looks from the outside when you walk around. And we create a new kind of uh, environment here. Of course, this is former agricultural areas, this one. But you see, this one is just the first two or three years, it's popped out with all kinds of different seeds. And we wanted to transform it into um, a new kind of um, greenery, not just grass or something common, a special kind of botanic 
And so we developed uh, these kind of seeds from grass and then thyme, different kinds of thyme. And, uh, and there's a landscape architect uh, from the municipality who's now been working with collecting the seeds and, uh, and cutting uh, the things so that she's keep keeping the unwanted things uh, away and, and proceeding with the seeds that we would like to come. So more or less it's, it's converted into a fine field, these areas, and we'll finish them by next year. And they will have a, sp a specific impact so that everything, a greenery inside the, the, the palace will have a, a uh, very nice botanic uh, gesture with the uh, thyme and grass, and which is robust and very easy to use for any kind of program. I really like it where it connects to the modern city, where this geometry, which is so unusual, cuts right into the city, and you get this uh, space where history talks in a, in a new sense, or the kids running around using the place. And here's from top of the northern mound, you see towards the northeast corner, where uh, it is, and it's 360 by 360 meters wide. And this is my office doing a picnic thing. Thank you very much. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, is there any question? We have any questions now or we will take the podium to Ivan Evojček. What do you think? So we will discuss later. So can I invite Ivone? Good evening. Uh, in the beginning, I want to thank you for the invitation here. I'm very pleased and honored to visit once again your beautiful city and tell a little about our projects. Uh, I came to you today from Opole. This is a small city uh, in South Poland, Southwest Poland, between two big cities, Wrocław and uh, Silesian area. I come from Opole, and uh, in 2004, I will stand, thank you. In 2004, we founded our small office together with Mariusz Tanczyński. Uh, we bought, we, we worked in Opole, and uh, it was our decision to come back there. Our first project I want to talk, tell today about is this house. This is important building for us because it's our first completed building. In 2004, we had uh, only a couple um, ideas in head and not anything built. Magda, our client, was 35 then. She came to us and trusted us and said, build me a house. When we started working, uh, we had um, a field uh, near Opole, in one of small villages there. There was only meadow. This is how it looks today. Our plot had uh, a road in the north and garden in the south. This is how it looked like then. In a distance you could see only uh, old farm buildings. We took Magda to the plot and said, this is how your house will look like. She, I think she didn't believe us. What was important for her, it was the size of wardrobe. This is here. It's quite big, really. This was really important. What was important for us, uh, we wanted to use this typical form of uh, old Silesian building, and we tried to create a modern house for her. All. Uh, um, functions like uh, living room, kitchen, also bedrooms. We situated from the south, we made a huge terrace, 
and it's partly covered with roof. This is what we showed to her. She said, okay, we had to build, uh, we had to make one compromise here because um, this is, these are photos from the building side. Uh, there was one thing we couldn't agree. We wanted to have black roof. She said, I will have red one. And I won't build anything. So we had to agree for the red roof. And uh, at the beginning, you must imagine, in 2004 in Poland, this was a time where people built houses like this one. We call it in Poland typical houses. You can buy them in newspaper on, or in internet. And um, I think it was first attempt in Apollo to build something what, what, was, what came from traditional housing. And uh, we were very happy with the result. Although the, the, root, the, the roof is so red, you can see it from two or three kilometers, really. <laughs> At the beginning, people told about our house that it looked like a barn, and it was a huge compliment for us. She loves the house and lives here now with two children and a dog. And the garden is bigger. And uh, this house and a couple others um, gave us um, a good uh, basis for doing this competition. Uh, in 2005, City of Pola announced a competition for a new reception building of Open Air Museum. And this is uh, Opola. Odra River with channels, and our site is located here at the top. Um, open Air Museum in Opole, this is uh, actually an ethnographic park, the size of about 10 hectares. The original plan was done, um, I don't remember the year, but by quite a good architect, uh, Jerzy Góralski, and uh, he planned that in this area, uh, a place for this new reception building. In this park, ethnographers um, brought from our villages, our region, original uh, houses and farms, and restored to show how life looked like before, in 19th century and earlier. The houses are all originals. There is also a church, windmills. Uh, people come. Uh, to this place for walks and also for seasonal celebrations like Harvest Festival or Easter. This is uh, quite a popular place in Opole to visit. This is our site already with this building. As I said, it was a competition and we won it. We were then very young. Yes, this is the original plan. And um, our site looked like this. We had many, many trees to destroy. Uh, this is uh, along uh, Brotswarska Street. Um, and these buildings, which are in this park, look like this. This is actually a restaurant. This is our closest neighbor, also a neighbor. This is how the park looks like. And what we did in our concept, we took two directions. And this is the direction of interference. All we did in direction north-south was uh, something new. We did new lines of uh, um, entrance place and also for uh, designing the space inside. And line uh, or direction east-west this was for us the direction of uh, tradition. We took shapes of our closest neighbors. You can see the barn and the restaurant. And we made, I think, quite a long building, more than 52 meters. And we said, we put all the function in this building. Um, typical old house in, uh, in our area looks, looked like this. In the middle, there was a vestibule and you could come to a black room, black room on the left. Black room was um, originally for family. It was in a room we used every day. At the end, there was a chamber, place for storage of the best food, the best clothes, 
everything that was precious for them. On the right, there was a white room. It was a place where guests came. It was used only on holidays. It was um, the best place in the house. On the right, you can see the um, model of our building. Our vest this vestibule in the middle became our entrance hall. On the, on the left, we made all the um, rooms for the staff. And on the right, we made the part for visitors, because we had to plan uh, a room for lectures, also a small shop, and uh, the chambers became, in our concept, two places. Big room for lectures and small room for, uh, for staff to discuss new projects, also for asking smaller groups of guests. Uh, in facade, we used um, wood, and uh, I think the English name for it is shake, as a cover material, and glass. Um, we, um, we made out of wood uh, the shelters, which uh, first of all covered the building from the sun, also from the noise from the, um, from the street, from Wrocławska street. And uh, what we said about um, shake, we will cover not only the roof, also the walls. This is our plan, how we wanted to um, design area closest to the building. Um, these are the lines in direction north-south, as I told you. This is what we made new in the plan. And the building, ground floor, entrance hall. This is literally the black part, the black room, uh, staff for, for the director yeah, and for uh, economic uh, workers. All the um, ethnographs, they have rooms upstairs, I will show you right now. And on the right, in the ground floor, we have a um, white room. So the conference room, and toilets and small shop. Mm -hmm. Yes, first floor. Uh, for the ethnographs, we made rooms from the north they all can see the garden, the park. From the south, this is the side of Wrocławska Street. We left only for toilets and storage rooms. And uh, when I spoke to them lately, they are very happy with this, uh, with this space to work because um, they have a lot of light and uh, quiet to work. What we didn't plan is the beautiful view from, from this small bridge, which is over the entrance hall. This is, uh, these are the renderings from the, from the competition. I like to show them because um, we have them hanging in our office on the wall and we still like them. They are like comics a little bit. And this is uh, in 2008. Now it's becoming more and more gray, it's getting gold. Once we had to explain the director of this, um, of this museum, why we think it's still beautiful, because he wrote to us a letter that the, the building is getting ugly because it's greyish. We said it was the plan. This, I like this photo because um, you can see here our neighborhood. We wanted to make something, something modern, but um, by using wood we wanted to connect, to have this, this, link, between, this link between tradition and our concept. This is the garden in the, in the middle of the uh, park. The place is mostly visited during the year by groups of children from schools. They learn here how uh, men used to live, how, the, how uh, it looked like when they bake a bread, for example. And they spend a lot of time, time in the park. For cladding, we used acacia wood. We, um, we used something hard and something, some kind of wood that would be uh, would last uh, a long time on these facades. In the interior, this is this bridge, which beautiful view actually to both sides. In, Pol in Poland, we have this regulation: you have to protect the glass so people don't come through the glass. So we take, we took a traditional pattern from uh, from a village near Opola made by old women in, on fabrics, we made it a little bigger and put on the windows. 
This is the entrance hall and uh, through this door you can come to the park. This is a small shop. This is uh, the bridge in the first floor. And this is my favorite room. This is the small chamber in, in the part of when, when the staff works. And um, by putting it outside the building, you have the feeling you are in the garden already. This is the big room for lectures. And this is the small chamber for staff. This is the view from the Wrocławska Street. Um, for this building, we got um, the main prize uh, from Polish Association of Architects in 2009, and we were also nominated for Miss Mandora Award, which was then for us uh, a great honor. In 2006, we made the competition for new public library in Apollo. Here is again our city center. Our plot was in a very special place near uh, Monówka Channel. This competition we, uh, we didn't want. I show you this design because we like the project. This is our site. We had an existing uh, apartment building here, quite old one, and a new part which should be in the, in the plan, in the square, in the city square. And this is our great neighbor, Monówka Channel. Very nice place in Apollo. This is our second neighbor, church. Very old one and uh, also beautiful. This is our site. This is the old, uh, at, um, old house and this is the place where the new part should be. What we did here was, uh, first of all, preserving some views that we find that are important in the city. Second of all, we created entrance plaza for the entrance square for this building. And we said that uh, whatever we have in the ground floor will be extend, will extend uh, this, this plaza. As we went in each floor part that is open for the view to the river, to the park, with places to sit, to read, or only to watch. And in this old building we made a place for books, because they don't like sun so much. We wanted to have this building partly over the water. You can see here we are hanging over the water. Like I said, we didn't win this competition, but this is for us a very important project. Now I want to show you, I think, one of our smallest projects, but one with the biggest reach. Uh, in 2009, we made a project that was made and then sent in many copies to all those countries. And probably a couple more. This is a fittings display for Cludi. We cooperated with Cludi and we designed it um, they liked it, and um, I show you this because um, in 2009 it was done for maybe two, maybe three years, but uh, till now it works very well. It's only um, it has only different colors, but uh, when I think that uh, someone can see our furniture in India or Oman or I don't know Tanzania, it's always fascinating to me that uh, such a small office can do something that goes so far away. Um, in 2012, um, we did another competition. In every city there is a company that takes care of pipeline installation and supply of water. Um, the one in Apollo, short name Big, has a long story. They have an uh, area in Apollo situated here. And they have beautiful um, old buildings uh, built in 19th century that are made of brick. One of them, old machine hall, was used uh, like a, a magazine and stor storage for old parts. They had this idea to uh, transfer it into a museum and uh, also a conference room. 
to uh, for gatherings, for lectures, and other functions. And they organized the competition. We had this uh, beautiful brick building divided in the center with a, with a wall. We had also an, a gift uh, we had to preserve here. There were toilets made by other architect who worked there and we couldn't destroy it. Um, so we said, this is company that takes care of water, so we put inside a drop of water and also another wall and make um, under this drop of water all the functions we need to, to uh, serve this building. Um, because um, in this competition we like this old building so much we said whatever we put inside we can easily take out. This was our idea. We wanted to make this drop of water in um, stretch sealing technology and use light to create different atmosphere in this um, interior. As you can see, we, we preserved the brick, we preserved the wooden ceiling. Um, later we found out that only the big company, they wanted to make a museum and those parts you can see here, these are the only parts they wanted to show there, along with a couple of photographs. In this competition we got, I think, honorable mention. This is another one, also one of our dreams. Um, Wrocław is 100 kilometers away from Opole, in the direction west. This is a big city uh, with great history and uh, great landscape. And like in Opole, also the river Odra is uh, very strongly present in the city center. In Wrocław they have also a couple islands on the river. One of them became a uh, subject of, our, of this competition. This is Pomorska Island. And uh, this part uh, was in competition. What is the biggest uh, advantage of this site uh, location? In front of it, on the other part of, uh, on the other side of the river, there is the main building of um, Wrocław University. Yes, this is this building. And not far away, in this direction, there is the city center. The biggest problem was the size of this plot. You can see, this is really very small. This competition was organized by a developer. They already built here, here one building, apartment house, here another one. We understood this competition as a um, way to discuss with the city a development plan because the plan allowed to build here only four stories. We made some uh, analysis and we made a model and we decided we can go higher. Um, yeah, we took three directions, three urban directions in this area and our building, we divided our building in three parts and we reflected those directions from the neighborhood. We wanted to have here a high building, all in white, Uh, as seen from the bridges, we wanted to have a tower. As seen from the road, we wanted to have something more like, I don't know, ship. In, 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 the, in this competition, uh, there were, I think, 96 works completed. And what won was very similar to this. And we were actually disappointed because uh, we have seen some of the works that came to this competition and some of them were really great and not so low, I must say. Housing Mazurka Street is one of our um, also smallest designs, but we like it a lot. Uh, we are here in Opole. This is um, housing area. The houses were built in the 20th, in 19th century. 
originally for rail train workers. This is, um, there are, I think, mostly semi-detached houses. Each one of them has uh, about 80 square meters of uh, usable floor area. They are really very small. Our friends came to us with this house and they asked, should we sell it or should we keep it and re reconstruct? We were very stupid because we said, keep it, we should buy it instead. This is a um, great neighborhood, but only a couple of the houses looks like, look like this because um, now it's, the whole area is uh, protected by law. But in the meantime, many of them were destroyed and uh, rebuilt in a very ugly way. Our friends, this is uh, how it looked like. This one is the original too. This one is changed, but not so bad. I will show you. Oh yes, this is this, this one is ours. This half. This neighbor is very bad. We had uh, not nice discussion discussions with him. This is our house from the south, and with uh, extra storage buildings that were built later. This is the original plan. As you can see, the house was originally so so small. This was done later. First floor. This is what we did. We destroyed this part and make it brighter from here. We wanted to create um, a great living space for a couple and a dog. They wanted to um, have a big living room open to the garden as much as possible. These are from our work from the beginning some renderings to show them how to do and uh, we are very happy because I think we did a little change in this neighborhood for good. This is what it was. And this is photo from the building process. This is and this is from the building from the building process yeah, from two years before. Um, because this um, whole area is under protection, we had to discuss the project with the uh, local government and we couldn't go farther than the neighbor. This is the garden and this is view from the winter. And this is how it looked, looks now. It needs uh, still planks on the terrace, because it will be wooden terrace, and some works inside, but the owners already live there, and they are totally happy with the house. When I say, when I come there and say, you have to do this and this, they say, what do you want? We are happy. And we are happy because um, at the end we wanted to say, that on this plot nothing happened, and I say I can I think that uh, what we did is not a big interference, in, not big interference, but uh, we made this the living space bigger. This is the view from the uh, first floor in the garden, as you can see when it's being cleaned. The plot is now huge. This. Is for, this was for us very important because we, we kept the, old, the original lines of the roof. We gave them extra space for living here. And in the ground floor they have all the basic rooms for everyday life. Um, this is the last project I want to show you today. Um, this is again Pole. And we are in Bielkowice. This is the site of our museum, here. And a um, couple of years ago, a private client came to us and said uh, he wants to work with us and build a house. Uh, we have here a very special neighbor, probably, maybe you know, 
there's a Silesian office, Kafka Promes, and they made in Opole a house which uh, got uh, a title House of the Year. I don't remember the year, sorry. It, I think it was 2006. Um, it was very famous. And our neighbor bought a parcel right next to it. And we um, discussed about this concept more than a year. We met with our clients because this is a married couple with two children. We discussed with them, we met with them almost every week. We drank a lot of coffee. And uh, what we did in the final result is a house that uh, is combined from open and closed space. They complete each other and cannot exist one without the other. The house is, um, as you can see, the, the open space is partly is made of glass, it's closed. Partly the water is uh, the neighbor, the, the neighbor of, of the glass. The closed part and all the construction is made entirely from, from concrete. The ground floor is opened to the east, south and west. And we have here living room, open staircase and kitchen. In the, um, in the first floor we have bedrooms, bathroom and part for the parents. This is what you see when you come to them as a guest. They wanted to have maximum privacy. Um, so we decided, okay, let's make a wall. So we did a wall. And actually the house is behind this wall. They um, also said they, they like stone. That's why we have quite high fence from the three sides made of stones. The fourth one is made of green, greenery. And uh, actually this view is our favorite because uh, when you enter, this is a great place for kids to play. This is also a place for cars. But if you are not a guest, you cannot see anything more. When invited, you come to the entrance part. When this place is higher, this is partly the kitchen. What we used here as materials is concrete, steel and glass. This entrance to the living room. This is the kitchen. And in the top, I don't know if it's good scene, but it's the main bedroom. And once when we came to, to make photographs, it was early in the morning. I was standing here in the, in the ground floor, and our client was still in bed. And I said, hi. It's really working. This is the living room with open view to the quite a big plot. This, this high fence you can see gives them um, really privacy. They, they uh, cannot be seen from outside. It was very important for them. The swimming pool has two parts. This one is big and this one on the right is uh, very um, shallow. There is an island made of wood. This is our open staircase. Uh, it consists of two steel elements, one and second. They are not connected to each other. We were afraid because they have small children and we were afraid with that at the beginning you should install also something here to, to preserve the children from falling down. But when we came there for visit, um, uh, the, the son took us and said, now we have to be very careful, careful because we are going upstairs. And he walked uh, on the stairs in the middle and was really very careful. We had uh, with our clients uh, during the building process, which, which took more than three years, we had many discussions. We, for example, discussed how many stones we put in this shallow part of swimming pool, to, because um, you can, these are um, sliding doors, and from the kitchen you go to this island through the stones. And we discussed how many stones, which ones, and where. 
we had very aware clients here and um, they were also very demanding. We spent a lot of time working on this project, on every detail actually. This is the first floor, staircase once again, and concrete walls. This is the part of the parents. They have uh, also a balcony looking through the east to the east. Main bathroom and view from the main bedroom to the ground floor. This is uh, in. Um, we have also a garage and uh, some technical rooms, and this is the view when you come from the garage to the ground floor. This is the house from outside. Our clients, uh, they travel a lot and they like to visit foreign countries, but last year they spent the whole summer here in their house because uh, we had a very warm summer and they said they could swim on 10 p.m. and the water was almost 30 degrees warm. The children bring kids together here, bring friends, sometimes more than 10 and they swim together and have fun. <coughs> and as I said, here in front, the kids play. And behind this wall, they live and rest. Even mobile phones don't work there. It's because of concrete, probably. Thank you.